We are continuing our uh, study on nonfiction, and today we are on session five. And we're going to be talking about challenges that we face by different nonfiction texts. So a few days ago, we spent time exploring the various structures that nonfiction can take. And we talked about how knowing these structures can help a reader determine what information is the most important. Remember how much easier it was to take notes on that Arabian Orcs news clip when we realized that it followed a problem solution structure? Don't forget, you can always refer to the common nonfiction text structures that you have in front of you right now if you need a reminder of the variety of structures that nonfiction can have. So I've got a little challenge for you. I have several quotes, five quotes in front of you from famous people, and I want to see if you can name a nonfiction structure that's embedded in each of them. It's not easy to do this. Um, we've had teachers try to do this, and they struggled with it too, but I believe in you. I feel like you have got it. So um, the first one is by Mark Twain. Get your facts first, and then you can distort them as much as you please. I want you to think, is this chronological? Is it a problem solution, cause and effect, compare and contrast? I want you to think about that. Hmm. Well, we can determine that this example is actually chronological because it has first and then. It has those key words that are listed in our chronological chart. So now I want us to read the second one. Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. What type of structure does that quote embody? Well, alone we can do so little. That could be named as a problem. And a solution is, well, together we can do so much. So again, this could be a problem and solution based quote. We're going to go ahead and skip ahead. So all of this talk of text structure is making me think of another way structure gets complex in hard nonfiction. Sometimes texts are what we call hybrids. I'm sure that word is familiar. Who has heard of a hybrid car? A hybrid car has a gas engine and an electric motor. So it has two different power sources that help the car run. The same is true for a hybrid text. A hybrid text has two very distinct parts. A narrative part that sounds like a story and an expository part that feels like it's teaching information. Sometimes you can be reading in an information text and you can encounter a long story embedded in it. And then you say to yourself, ding, 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 this is a story. Then you think, I need to put on my glasses for reading this story. Or you may be reading a narrative about the true story of an amazing dog and come across the part where you say to yourself, whoa, hey now, time for the reading, reading for information glasses. I think that is common. And the challenge is that readers need to be ready to change alongside the text. After all, when the text is a story, we want to use our lenses for reading a story. When the text is an expository, we need to really be reading for information. So we want to always ask ourselves, what signals do authors give to readers to let you know when a part of a text should be read through the lens of a story and when a part should be read through the lens of reading for information? Today, I want to teach you that authors give signals to readers to let you know when a part of a text should read like a story and when a part of a text should be read for information. When it's a hybrid, two parts in one. So let me tell you a little bit about how this will work. 
I know that you've been reading some texts on your own, but today I brought some for us to look at together. They contain parts that require different ways of reading. In a minute, I will reflect those in front of you. I want you to be thinking about where the text calls for you to read through the lens of a story and when it's calling you to read for information. We are going to be using color codes to indicate whether it's a narrative through the lens of a story or if it's expository through the lens of information. So we'll place a blue star when we feel like it's a narrative and a green star when it's expository. And just again, to help us remember, we know that in nonfiction structures, we have chronological, problem solution, cause and effect, compare and contrast. All right, you ready? You're gonna have to push yourself really hard to think. What actual signals do authors give us to let us know? Well, these are some signals to be on the lookout for when we look at our text together. A narrative reads like a story. There might be a character, a setting, a problem, a resolution. It treats a thing or group like a character. If it's reading for information, an expository lens tells all about a topic. It might have a main idea and details, and it tells about groups of things. Let's look at our first article. We're only going to read the beginning. Oops. A flicker of candlelight danced on the walls of the tomb's outer chamber, revealing strange markings. Howard Carter held the candle carefully. Behind him stood groups of people waiting. Can you see anything? One man asked. The man's voice was stern and curious. Carter looked at the man, whose name was Lord Carnivarn. Howard Carter mop mopped the sweat off his brow. He was running out of time. So I want us to look at our nonfiction text signals. Is this being treated more like a narrative or is this being treated more like an expository? Does it read like a story or does it tell about a topic? Well, I can see that a flicker of candlelight, it's really describing a setting. We have a character that's been introduced. It really is reading more of like a story. So I'm gonna code it blue because this is, although it is an ex, a nonfiction text, it's reading like a narrative text. Let's look at this next one. I'm only going to read the first paragraph. Yum, yum, plants that eat meat. All plants get energy from the sun, but some plants can't get all the nutrients they need from sunshine, water, and soil. Some of these plants live in places with poor soil. Others have no roots to take in nutrients, so they eat tiny animals, frogs, and insects. These are plants that eat meat. So going back to our coding nonfiction text, was this more read like a story or more like an expository? Did it tell about a topic? Did it give a main idea and then list details? Yes, we can say that it is being read more of like an expository. So readers, you should be proud of yourself. It is tricky work to study texts and think about the signals authors use to let us know how to read in a narrative way or an expository way. The chart we've made in front of us is a good start. I bet if we looked at other texts, we would see that not all authors use these signals. Authors might use other signals and we, try, we can try to add those signals to our chart as we discover them. So throughout the last couple days, we've been learning how to read nonfiction well. We know that we have to make a connection, preview the whole text, figure out the text structure, tackle the hard parts, and today we want to notice if this text is a hybrid. Is it, is it reading for a story or reading for information? Today, you are going to read for 20 minutes. You're going to pick a nonfiction book, and I want you to decide how your nonfiction book is structured. Is it structured more through a narrative lens 
or through an expository lens, and you'll be expected to give an example of why you think one or the other.